In episode 6 I made a jig for transitioning Fender style headstock faces. This time we're finishing the headstock off by thicknessing the face with a router sled that I can attach a camera to and shoot smooth tracking shots. to episode 8 of this Luthier's Workshop build series. Today's magic doodad is a router sled. Like I mentioned it's perfect for thicknessing headstocks where a traditional planer won't work, but also for thicknessing bodies, other jigs, toast, anything you like. It was great to work with some steel again. I used to be a metal fabricator back before I was a Zisu society into, I mean Luthier. Before I get started, I want to let you know I'm now on Patreon. An average video takes 5 working days to shoot and edit, and the materials for these projects can add up too. So Patreon is a great way to build a community where you can not only help these videos to get made, but to make the videos better and hopefully more frequent. You can also get free guitars and basses, discounted merch, and whatever else I can come up with. The link is in the description down below with free plans and all the links you'll need to connect with me online. So let's get started. After measuring the width and length of my widest type of guitar, the Conquistador, I can start with a clear idea of how big the maximum surface area I might want to route will be. The Conquistador is slightly bigger than my Electra V style guitar, so I can cut that on here too. The basis of this jig is these two linear steel rails with four matching bearings. The rails are 1.5 meters long, and the whole shebang cost me just under 200 Australian dollars. You can make the same thing out of wood if you like, and I will include plans for just that in the description. But for me, this tool is going to be multi-use, so I'm going full Trent Reznor with it. The bearings have M6 size tapped mounting holes in the top and they can only move along one axis, in this case, wherever the rail is pointed. The concept is to mount the workpiece between the rails at a minimum distance of the width of my Conquistador guitar body plus the distance from the edge of my router bit to the edge of the closest bearing on each side. Remember, the bit in a router is in the middle of the bottom surface, so you have to ensure that it can cut past the edge of your workpiece without its base hitting anything. Then I add the width of the bearings, and that gives me my gantry rail's length. Then I mark that length onto a piece of steel L section I got from my local big box hardware store. Two 1.5 meter lengths cost me under $50. I mark the inside surface for some reason and use the factory edge of one of the workpieces as a ruler to mark the cut lines. I pretty much freestyled this whole build and did the plans after so this is basically a video of stupid mistakes. Once I marked out my pieces, made about 500 errors and marked them out again, I cut them into length with an angle grinder. Now I have one length, I can use it to trace its length onto the other rail, if I can find my pen. Once the line is marked, it's back to cutting. I worked out I could lose a little length, so I also trimmed off the ends. Now 
Now the gantry rails have been cut, I can mount them to the bearings with M6 Allen head bolts. I only need one at each end, I started off with two, then realised my router base was going to hit them, but after testing, it didn't need them anyway. In order to keep the rails connected, I decided to use some more L bracket material to connect them, like Big Lego. I have these old pickup routing templates I never use anymore, and they're both the same length. My router base is made out of one too, so they'll be perfect to use as spaces for the gantry. I mark the length roughly, these don't need to be precise. Then I trim them to length. If you're making one of these out of wood, you're probably done by now. Once the end pieces are cut, I give them a quick bevel with a flap disc to remove any sharp edges. Then I bolt them to the gantry rails. If you're short on space, you can bolt your end pieces under the gantry rails, which will give you an extra 10mm at each end. I noticed the router base was dragging, and upon further inspection, I saw the holes in the L section had been punched out, leaving a sharp lip on the inside that was catching the router base. So I used the flap disc again and ground them all smooth. Now it looks even nicer. I pop the router back in and now it slides smoothly. Waxing the rails with soap or paste wax will help even more. I took half of the bolts out like I mentioned earlier and the gantry seems pretty rigid. Now that it's way too late, I check it against my guitar body to make sure I have clearance on all sides. This body is made of prototyping foam. It's all clear and I'm happy, even though I don't look like it. I found a new problem though. The extractor port on the router is banging into my end plate. So I'm going to cut it and access. First, I want to hog out the area with the grinder, then soften it up with a flap disc. Fixed it. That's the router sled part of things done. But I need a dolly system for my cameras so I can make these videos look cool for you. So I'm going to mount a removable platform onto this. I bolt a leftover section of L bracket onto the frame with bolts and wing nuts. If I were you, I'd do the same thing on both sides of the gantry with sections that are as long as your rails to help stop the gantry from flexing when you're using it. You don't have to use wing nuts, these bolts will be permanent so you can affix them however you wish. Then I take my camera platform and trace the L bracket holes from underneath. Once it's traced, I flip the board and drill slightly oversized holes with a brad point bit. If you care about tear out on the other side of the board, 
Lay it on a sacrificial piece of wood. I'm mounting cork to the other side so I'm being messy. Later on, I changed my mind and decided to drill new holes so that they'd look more centered. Like I said, lots of mistakes on this one. I take my board and trace around it onto some cork tile. I buy these in packs of 10 and use them in my luthier's vise as calls and all kinds of other things. Then I cut them out, I take shallow passes and let the blade do the work. Cork is very tenacious so if you push it it's likely to explode or something. I glued it onto the board using dollar store glue on the board and very expensive accelerator on the cork. Yin and yang. Now everything is upside down and I'm lining up the gantry with the holes so I can work out the wing nut positions on the underside. Then I mark where they go. Now it's time to make pigeon poop. I'm terrible at MIG welding yet somehow I've mastered the fine art of fillet brazing. Oh well, this just needs to be strong. I don't care how it looks. Sorry about the messy workshop. I made these cabinets in episode 1, lots of room to hide my shame in. To test the setup, I used the neck we transitioned in episode 6 and I double sided taped it to a piece of scrap I'm using as a riser. I stick the neck to the riser and the riser to the bench top. Once I've set the bit depth to where I want it, I just start routing. The tape didn't hold as well as I'd hoped, so I guess I better make a base for this thing at some stage. If you had your neck or body clamped down properly, you could hit it a lot harder with a router, but I'm taking careful bites. I'm also not using the right router bit for this. I should be using a face milling bit, so I'm looking forward to seeing the results when I buy one of those. This is after the first pass and I can see there is some flex in the gantry so I'm going to take the advice I gave you earlier and stiffen it up with some extra metal. So we're into the second pass which is the final pass. Always leave a little extra on the face and sand the rest by hand just in case you have tool marks like I did. It's always a great idea to aim the open dust port of your router straight at your expensive mirrorless camera too. Okay, that was the last mistake for this video. Straight off the sled and this is what we've got. I call that a very respectable job. I'm going to finish it with a light hand sand using 120 grit paper. Sanding makes a lot of dust. I think I need to make a downdraft table in a future episode. I'll add it to the list. So after a quick blast of sanding, we've got this. I want to thank the Guitar Nerds podcast again for their incredible support. Their link is down below. Please check them out and listen to them talk about how great I am. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this episode. 
In the next one, I'm doing a table saw special with jigs to turn your table saw into a host of flexible tools to make your woodwork hit the next level. I hope to see you then.